What's going on? Welcome back to another video and today I'm taking you through the basics of 2D character animation in DaVinci Resolve and how you can do the whole animation process with just one node. There's a little bit of setup to it but once you get everything set up properly, it makes life so much easier and makes the animation process so much faster. Now, with all that said, let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is just drag a fusion composition in. Maybe stretch that out a little bit and head straight into the fusion page. And then we're just going to grab a background node, connect that up to the media out, and just bring the alpha right down to give us that transparent background. We don't need any background on this. Now we can start building our character. I just got this from Freepik. It's just a free site where you can download assets. But the good thing is you can download them in Illustrator files. Now, I don't have Illustrator. I just use PhotoP to convert it into a Photoshop file. Then I can break that character down into all its moving parts. So you can see here, I've just got all the different moving parts of the character, which is super important to have to be able to do these animations. So to start building this character, first we add a merge node. And then on top of that, we add another merge node. And we just plug that into here. And then we plug a background node with the alpha right down into that merge. And then we can start dragging in all our pieces. So we're gonna start with the torso, drag that in, and then the legs, drag that in. Always make sure to just name all these files. So we can just press F2 to rename and rename this first one torso and this next one legs. Then after that, we're going to start with the right arm. For the arms, I've got them broken down into the top and bottom section because you have two joints that move in your body. And for this one, we want them to be in their own little node tree. I'll explain why that is later, but it makes your animation process a whole lot easier when you set this up properly. So we can just bring that merge node out and create another one on top. And then we can get the right forearm on there as well. So now that we've got all the pieces of our character together, we can start getting set up to do the animations. So we're going to start off with the arms because they're going to be the first moving parts. Under the right forearm, we're going to hit shift space, bring up our select tool and put in a transform node. And then under this merge, we're going to add another transform node. You'll notice here that I haven't put one on the right shoulder. That's because we want this right shoulder and right forearm to be connected because when you move your shoulder up and down, your forearm comes with it. So you can see when I rotate this, it rotates the whole arm. So we're just gonna put transform nodes on all of the arms. And then we'll put another one on the head. We don't want the neck to move, just the head. So now we've got these transform nodes, you can see that if I rotate stuff, it doesn't really rotate the way you'd want it to. So we have to change our pivot points. So we just grab this pivot point and put it pretty close to where the elbow joint is and you can just test it out by rotating. That's actually perfect there. And then this one needs to go up on the shoulder. That's pretty good. So you can see when I move this transform around, it's affecting both the forearm and the shoulder because this transform node is affecting everything before it, which is exactly what we need. Because like I said before, when you move your shoulder, you want your forearm to come with it. And then we're just gonna do the same thing for the left. Pretty good, not perfect, but pretty good. Then for the head, you want the pivot point around the back of the neck. And you want that at the back of their head just because that's the way that the joint would work. When you're setting up these animations, you gotta make sure that all of your joints are moving the way they would in real life for it to actually look semi-realistic. Even though it's a 2D cartoon, you want the movements to be natural. And then for the purpose of this video, the legs aren't gonna move. But if you were to do them, you would set it up the same way as you'd set up the arms. So if you were to break these legs down, you would probably have one leg coming down to the knee and then another coming down to the ankle and then another coming down to the foot. So you'd have three separate sections and you'd put them all in their own little node tree, just like you do with the arms. So now we just need to add one last transform and that is just under this very last merge node. In this transform node, we're gonna create some custom controls. So to create some custom controls in here, we right click, hit edit controls, and we can just start, we can make a brand new control. The first one we're gonna do is the right shoulder. So we go uh, shoulder, we want it to be on number, we want the default to be zero, the range to be negative 180 to 180, and then the same on the allowed. And then we want a screw control and angle control. And then you can just click OK. So now you see up here, this user section pops up. It doesn't do anything right now, but we're gonna connect them up in a minute. So you're gonna go through and create three custom controls for each arm. 
so the next control we're gonna make is for the forearm. So we go uh, forearm number zero, negative 180 to 180 and negative 180 to 180. And then screw control, angle control, okay. And then one last one for this, we're gonna go R uh, full arm and then the exact same settings. Then just go set them up for the left arm and the head. So now that you've got all of these set up, you're probably wondering how the hell do I get them to work and what are they even for? So you can see we twist them around and they do nothing. To get these to work, we're gonna use some expressions. We're just gonna pin this so it stays there no matter what we open. And then we come into our right forearm and under angle, we right click on angle, expression, and then this little plus symbol, drag that down to right forearm and then add, go space dash space and then drag it down to right full arm. So now you'll see when I spin the forearm, it spins. And when I spin the full arm, it just spins the full arm, but we're gonna fix that in a second. So now we get the next transform, same thing, right click expression, drag this down to the shoulder, space dash space, and then drag this down to the full arm. So now you'll see the shoulder moves, but when we move the full arm now, the shoulder and elbow move. So it gives it a really natural look to how you would actually move your arm. Cause you know, when you move your arm, you don't just move it straight up and down. You sort of move it in like fluid motions. And this just saves having to do so many keyframes and match everything up perfectly. You can move your arm with one slider and it works perfectly every time. So now we're just gonna set the same thing up for our other arm. So now, instead of having to go through every single transform node that you've got separately and try and keyframe stuff and match things up, you can do everything in the same node. So if we wanna make the guy wave, we can come back to the first frame, hit keyframe on, let's say, left full arm, come forward, let's say 30 frames, bring his arm up, and then we come back maybe five frames, put a keyframe on the forearm, come forward like 10 frames, uh, 15 frames, bring his forearm in, come forward another 15, bring his forearm back out, come forward another 15, forearm in, and then come forward, let's say another 20, and we can reset the values back down. And then if you just come into spline and just smooth out the motions. So if we just click in the spline box, hit control A to select everything and just hit S, and that smooths out all the motions. So now you can see, the guy waves to you. Oh, not quite. I screwed that up a little bit. Screwed up something in the keyframes. So now you can see that we've got the guy waves to you. It's a little bit janky, but you know, for a five second animation, it works and it is super, super simple. You can set up as many of these custom controls as you want. So if you've got 20 different moving points, you can set up a control for every single one of them in the same node and it just saves so much time instead of having to go through and just find all the different nodes. You've got everything labeled in the same thing, all with very simple controls, all keyframeable, and it's just, it's perfect. So that is the basics of 2D character animation in DaVinci Resolve and a few tips and tricks to make it a whole lot easier and a whole lot faster. Using these custom controls just makes life so much easier. And it doesn't just have to be for animation. You can set them up for anything you want in Fusion. Like I said, there's a little bit of setting up to do, but once you know what you're doing and you know how to use those expressions and set the controls up properly, your life's just so much better. And especially if you're doing this stuff for client work, you wanna be able to work as efficiently and fastly as possible but that's enough of that that's all i've got for you today if you guys want to learn how to make 3d animations just like imangazi make sure to watch this video here and if you guys have any content or stuff that you want to see me do on the channel make sure to drop it down in the comments thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one